Thursday, March 21st, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, we're down here in Western Australia on Google Earth, and we're looking at one of two cyclones about to make landfall in Australia at the same time, or at least within hours of each other. The one over here on the left has the potential to be a record-setting cyclone, and I'll give you the numbers on Veronica here in a minute. This is Cyclone Trevor. It's already made one landfall. It's re-entered the Gulf of Carpentaria, and it's about to make a, another landfall. It was originally going to, or at least it was forecasted to, rapidly re-intensify in the Gulf of Carpentaria to a Cat 4. It looks like that energy now has gone to the west coast and is going to infiltrate Cyclone Veronica as it's going to make landfall as possibly a record-setting cyclone. Trevor should make landfall as a Category 1, maybe a Category 2. Veronica is going to make landfall as quite possibly a Category 4, maybe even a Category 5 if the models uh, come into agreement. We'll have to wait and see what the storm does, but right now one model is showing a central low pressure around landfall of 897 millibars. That's way stronger than a Category 2 or a Category 3. That's up in the Category 5 range. So right now it's a Category 4 storm. It's going to make landfall about the same time as Trevor within the next 24 to 36 hours. This has happened before. Albeit rare, it's only happened one other time in known history. And this was back in 2015 when a double cyclone event occurred in Australia. And that was the only other time in recorded history that this has been documented. So we are looking at a historic event underway right now in Australia. Veronica over here in Western Australia, Trevor in Northeastern Australia. And I wanted to show you the numbers associated with Veronica. This is from weathercharts.com. 897 millibars for a central low pressure system right before landfall. That's a Cat 5. Easy Category 5. So we'll have to wait and see. Some models are showing a Cat 2. Some are showing a Cat 3. At one time they had Trevor making landfalls in Category 4 and that's since changed. Like I said, that energy seems to have gone from here over to here because it was reversed. So we'll have to wait and see how this unfolds. Either way, it's going to be a historic event. Only the second time in recorded history, double cyclones have made landfall in Australia. Here they are again at weathercharts.com. And you can see, I'll step it forward. This is Thursday, actually right now. And watch the one on the left. By Friday afternoon, 897 millibars just before landfall. And that's in the area of Karatha. Let me find Google Earth. Go back to Western Australia. Right in here, Karatha seems to be right in the center of the path of this hurricane, or the, not hurricane, cyclone. Cyclones are in the southern hemisphere. Hurricanes are in the northern hemisphere. Speaking of the northern hemisphere, we're looking at a small, uh, what they call a nor'easter, big storm heading up the northeast coast of the United States by tomorrow and tomorrow night. They could see some snow in western New York, especially in the elevations up in southern Canada, Maine, New Brunswick. Going to see high winds. Watch these isobars. See these lines get close together? It's going to be definitely a big wind event. Either way, it turns out uh, with regard to moisture, whether it's rain, whether it's snow, you can see there's going to be rain in the Boston, let's see, Boston, Rhode Island area, in New England in general, Boston, Manchester, New Haven. Could see significant amounts of rainfall, snow to the north and up in the elevations. But like I said earlier, high winds either way. In the Midwest, look for the potential for severe weather, yet once again, in some of the same areas that we've been seeing severe weather over the last two or three weeks. Central Texas, eastern New Mexico, going to be unstable air starting tomorrow, infiltrating New Mexico, Texas, and up into Colorado. That's Friday, March 22nd. And then on Saturday, let's step it ahead to Saturday, this energy is going to move to the east, and it's going to intensify. Uh, Central, Oklahoma, uh, Central Oklahoma, up into the Texas Panhandle, up into Kansas, Central Texas, this entire area on Saturday. Look for the possibility of severe weather, large hail, and even tornadoes. That's Saturday morning at 8 a.m., and it will be like that for most of the day on Saturday. Stepping in ahead to Sunday, 
The field is going to move to the east, northeast, and include east central Oklahoma, most if not all of Texas, into Arkansas and parts of Missouri and Kansas. Stepping ahead to Monday, it's still going to be around. This is instability in the atmosphere. It's going to move over to western Tennessee, just west of Nashville, Clarksville, Memphis, uh, parts of Missouri. Texas is still going to be in the mix. Parts of uh, Kansas, I'm sorry, Louisiana, Mississippi, southern Arkansas. Severe weather could be in the mix Sunday, Monday, and even into Tuesday. Parts of Tuesday, but Tuesday evening, it should clear out. We're looking at a, not necessarily a historic, but it's got hurricane personality traits, this big giant low pressure system spinning off the coast of Alaska. It's going to make landfall in southwestern Alaska, the northern part of the Aleutians. If you're in that area, you're going to see yet another significant wind event like we've been seeing across the Midwest. That's going to take place right now this weekend in the upper northeast. Well, this is going to be a significant wind event of its own as that has a central low pressure system lower than that of Cyclone Trevor down in Australia. Here's a loop that I put together of, I'm calling this the Alaska Super Low. This is a look at it on the goes west. That is a giant, almost like hurricane, but it doesn't officially, or it's not officially a hurricane but it's got a lot of the hurricane personality traits, and that is a 900, actually that's a 956 central low pressure system. Look at that, right there it is at weathercharts.com, 956. That's stronger than Cyclone Trevor right now spinning off the northeast coast of uh, Australia. Here's another look at the cyclones down in Australia, and you can see windy.com is still showing Trevor at 155 mile an hour before landfall. That's why I said earlier the models aren't in complete agreement. So we'll have to wait and see how this unfolds. This was forecasted a couple of days ago to strengthen before it makes landfall. Now it's not supposed to strengthen as much. So we'll have to wait and see. But it looks like the energy is going to be over here in Western Australia. As far as Scotland, Ireland, England, and Europe goes, the weather conditions should be pretty decent. As you'll see, starting after we get through Friday, we're going to have some winds and possibly rain and snow in the northern Scotland area and parts of Ireland. But come Saturday, there's going to be a high pressure, a ridge of high pressure, just park right over Great Britain. Watch this. And it's going to stay there for several days. You're going to have some wind and possibly rain down through Germany and Switzerland uh, about midweek or late uh, part, the latter part of next week. But after that, weather conditions should be high and dry. So look for pretty decent weather over the next few days in northern Europe, Great Britain, and Scotland. But right now, what we're watching, guys, is a historic event unfolding down in Australia as two cyclones are about to make landfall within the next 24 to 48 hours, a historic event that's only occurred once in recorded history. And one of these could be a record-setting cyclone, much like this super low up in Alaska. That's probably some sort of a record low system if it does make landfall in the next 24 to 48 hours, which more than likely it will. And finally, I want to take a look at some video footage sent in by Monique from Reno, Nevada. In yesterday's video, I shared this still image right about, I think it was right in here, of this, what appears to be a roll cloud. It looks like another one of those long linear clouds in the sky. In the video, you can see it extends for several miles in both directions, actually. And what's interesting about this video, it stayed in the same place for several hours. She took a video of the same cloud structure as the sun was setting. And it was orange and pink, right here it is. And it had changed shape just a little bit, but not too much. But this is the same exact location and the same cloud. Several hours later. So this structure didn't move, or if it did, it didn't move very much at all. So good observation, Monique, from Reno, Nevada. And this is the last video clip that she sent me. And this was as it was starting to fade away, as the sun was setting. You can see it's catching more sunlight, turning orange, kind of a pinkish color. Great video. Thanks for sharing, Monique. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.